I want to begin by expressing my deepest condolences with the families of those who've died in recent traffic crashes in Salt Lake City and in our surrounding communities. If it feels like deadly audio, auto pedestrian accidents are on the rise, it's because they are, not just in Salt Lake City, but throughout the state of Utah. In Salt Lake City, back in 2019, we had had one auto ped accident through May 4th of 2019. During that same period in 2020, we had one. During that same period through 2021, there were three. We're already up to nine in 2022. That's nine too many. As we talk about what we can do to make our streets safer for pedestrians and bikers, it's important to be clear that not every crash is the same. These incidents tend to fall into three categories. First, crashes that involve allegedly impaired drivers, which systemic solutions are less likely to prevent. Second, there's crashes precipitated by careless, distracted, and reckless drivers. And third, crashes involving pedestrians walking outside of a crosswalk or crossing against a traffic light. The challenge that we face in each of these cases is complex and so also must our approach be. Everyone deserves to be able to walk or bike through any city or neighborhood and enjoy the community without fear of being killed or injured by a moving vehicle. Salt Lake City, like cities across this nation, has long been a vehicle first city. But as we grow and our population density increases, as more pedestrians choose to walk or bike through our neighborhoods to get where they need to go, we need to evolve. We have to put the safety of our pedestrians first. We also need to better understand what's happening, why it's happening, and what we can actually do to make a difference. I am heartened to be here today with the Utah Department of Transportation, Utah Highway Patrol, and our own Salt Lake City Police Department who are all eager to find ways that we can curb crashes and fatalities and recommit ourselves to making our streets safer. In the city budget that I uh, proposed just this week to our city council, there's $2 million for traffic calming projects that we've already identified. And I'm urging our city council to fund that work, but we have to do more than that. Today, I'm announcing two steps that the city is taking to make Salt Lake City more safe for pedestrians and bikers. First, Salt Lake City will become the first city in Utah to partner with UDOT's Zero Fatalities Education Program, which focuses on preventing drowsy, distracted, and impaired driving. We've shared their educational materials in the past, but I want Salt Lake City to be a leader in curbing these disturbing trends that we're experiencing. We'll put this partnership to work through educational opportunities at the community level. I've asked UDOT to work with our community councils to educate them on zero fatalities outreach and to announce, encourage safe driving in our neighborhoods. I think that this is gonna be a critical step in pushing the message deeper within the city into the neighborhood level. Next, Salt Lake City is going to create a new Safe Streets Task Force. This is a multi-departmental effort within city government that'll bring our police department into cooperation with our transportation division. And they'll identify the most critical areas in our city where intervention might be necessary to help us prevent future crashes and injuries and deaths. That task force is gonna break down some silos to make, that, make it harder right now to make meaningful interventions. They'll be performing a deep dive into traffic patterns, looking at traffic crash trends and traffic citation data. That data set will then inform recommendations for both immediate city actions and our long-term policies. Whether that might be additional pedestrian signage or more warning lights for pedestrian crossings, uh, better barriers at high traffic intersections, more speed bumps, lower speed limits, or impaired driving awareness campaigns. We're not gonna be passive, uh, passive observers in a trend that right now is taking the lives of our residents. It just, it can't continue. And none of us should take this lightly. We all need to slow down. We need to follow the posted speed limits. 
stop at crosswalks. Each of us has a responsibility to commit every time that we get behind the wheel to the safety of those around us. I'm asking us to decide right now that we won't get behind the wheel if we're impaired. I want us to decide right now, and I commit right now, I recommit to not looking at your phone while you're driving. Let's all recommit to being safer drivers because the lives of children, mothers, fathers, so many loved ones is depending on every one of us and the decisions we make when we're behind the wheel. The city is going to work harder to keep our pedestrians and cyclists safe, but we need everyone to do their part as individual drivers. Thank you for being here today, and I'll turn the time over to Carlos Braceras, the UDOT um, director. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Mendenhall. Two nights ago, you gave me a call and said, let's do something about this, and I appreciate you doing that. We're all incredibly troubled by the recent crashes that we've seen around Salt Lake City and around the state. Crashes that have claimed the lives of toddlers, teenagers, parents alike. It's absolutely tragic, and even more so because these crashes didn't have to happen. They were all preventable. Reckless behaviors, impaired driving, speeding, distraction, are costing innocent people their lives. Our roads are better engineered than they've ever been before. They're safer than they've ever been before. You don't have to say sorry for the B. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> and they're costing, uh, um, excuse me, our roads are better engineered and safer than ever before. The cars we drive are safer than they've ever been before. But you really wouldn't have guessed it when you look at what we see happening with fatalities around the state. There's a problem. We have a problem. Today we're talking specifically about pedestrians and bicyclists, but the problem is even more widespread. As of yesterday, we had 105 fatalities across the state on Utah's roadways. In 2021, at this point in time, it was 86. And the year before that, it was 66. This trend that we've seen over the last two years is not unique to Utah. We're seeing this happen across the country. And when it comes to pedestrians here in Utah, we're nearly double where we were last year. 28 fatalities, pedestrians, compared to 15 last year. And we all know that in the span of just one hour this last Tuesday, three people were struck and killed on the Wasatch Front, including a five-year-old girl down at Sandy. And on Monday night, we've all heard the story of, three, of two three-year-olds playing in the barn, in the, in the uh, horse stable in Eagle Mountain, who were killed by a driver driving over 100 miles an hour and potentially impaired, running over those children. A 49-year-old bicyclist in Spanish Fork and here in Salt Lake City, a pregnant 24-year-old mother pushing her two-year-old daughter on the sidewalk was hit by an allegedly impaired driver who sped away. Her child was also critically injured. There's really no words to describe the losses that these families are experiencing right now. And these are only a few of the stories from around the state. In the past 30 days, six bicyclists have been killed on our roadways. That's equal to the number of cyclists that died through the entire year of 2021. And this is happening at a time of year when historically we have the lowest pedestrian and bicycle cyclist fatalities of the year. And if we follow historic trends, that could give us bad news for the rest of the year when we normally see them increase. Things can't continue like this. We must change. Poor decisions while driving are not really a big or small, you know, sometimes they may feel like a small consequence. But those small choices that people make have real consequences. Essentially, we're giving these families a life sentence with these choices that people are making. We need to care more about each other as people. And I know we've all been through a lot over the last two years. People seem to be more angry, they're frustrated, there seems to be more unknown in our lives. But whatever else is going on in your life, I ask you to do one thing. Put those troubles in the back seat before you get behind the wheel of the car and focus on the road ahead. 
Now, the risk at a press conference like this is that we don't reach the people who hear, need, to hear the, need to hear the message. And others could likely tune out. You might be interested to know that 88% of the people believe that we're above average drivers. We think we're better than most other people on the road. And so you're likely thinking, I don't need to hear this message. It's not important to me. I'm here to tell you that even if you're a perfect driver, the message is still important because you're sharing the road with people that might not be as good as you. People that are making different choices, choices that can affect lives. And so we need to be on the watch. We need to be aware of what's going on around us to think that people might not be making as good decisions as we might not be making. We need to watch out for ourselves and those that we love. And we also need to talk to family members and friends who we know are not doing the right things when they're on the roadway. I know it's tough to do this. It might be more convenient and easier if you chose to just not have that conversation. It's certainly more comfortable. But we need to have the difficult conversations with people that are doing the wrong things. Because we all know who these people are. Step in, have a hard conversation, and save a life. We need to commit to do that. At UDOT and with our partners at Zero Fatalities, we're looking at ways to help address and improve the problems that we're experiencing on our roads. And I think everyone knows there's no silver bullet. At times, this can feel like a very random events, and it's very difficult to be strategic and systematic about trying to find safe ways to make a difference. I could commit, tell you that everything we do, every project we do, we have over 800 projects in the works right now. Every project is a safety project. We try to build the safest roads we can. And I know our friends in law enforcement do an incredible job to keep Utah safe every single day. But we still have a problem. It's probably time to start doing things that we haven't tried before. We need to try the new ideas and we need to redouble down on the things that we've been doing that make a difference. So as the mayor said, we're committing to community conversations at a very local level. We have incredible technical resources, lots of engineers that know how to do the engineering work, but there's people in our communities that know and understand that transportation system better than any of us. We want to hear from you, we want to engage with you, we want to learn from you. We think together we can make our roadway safer. We're committing today that from here forward, we're going to spend an additional $4.2 million additionally every year for specific safety improvements for bicyclists and for pedestrians. We're going to, try to, we're going to use a data-driven approach to try to target those safety improvements to make the big, biggest bang for the buck. We're also going to increase by 50% our Safe Routes to School program. This will improve safety along those routes that have been designated by our school districts. These are the routes where our kids should walk and bike to school. We want our children to be, children to be safe as they go to and from school. We want our parents not to have to worry about their child's safety when they're going to get an education. Now, we have a lot of educational campaigns that we work with our partners on. You know, one of, and we have education part, uh, programs in the high schools, in the elementary schools, and uh, in middle school. One of the ones I'm the most proud of is our Parent Safety Night. This is where we invite drivers that just get their driver's permits together with their parents, and we spend about an hour with them talking about the five safe driving behaviors that they need to follow. We have about just under 70% of the high schools in the state of Utah are participating in this program today. It is increasing, but let's get to 100%. Let's have every one of our new drivers understand that you need to drive alert, you need to drive sober, you need to drive focused, you need to drive calm, and of course, you have to buckle up every single time. Now, Zero Fatalities has always been a program about partners. And we're lucky to have great partners, many of whom are here today with us. But we also want to cultivate new types of partnerships. I mentioned, um, I mentioned that with the press event, sometimes we're not probably reaching the people that need to hear our message. What, we're gonna, what I've asked my team to do uh, begin today, they're probably scratching their heads right now figuring out how to do this, is let's figure out how we can communicate with those that are in sobriety programs. These are folks that have committed to be sober. Let's try to learn from them what types of messages, what type of media, how could we have gotten to them 
when they weren't sober. That might have made a difference. So we can help those that are experiencing difficulty in their life figure out how to be safer on the roadways. Because I guarantee you, when people, people care about people, but we just need to be able to connect in a way that we have not done before. So we're committed to trying to figure that out. We're also building new partnerships with the city. I'm excited that Mayor Mendenhall has committed to starting something that I hope every city in the state joins us with. Our zero fatalities program. We're looking at a certification program where we can help work with cities so that we can co-develop safety programs that are unique to that community because when we do it together, we have a lot more ownership and it makes a difference. We believe these types of programs done together are better than any one agency doing it. Because no one agency, no one organization can do this. No one person could do this. It takes all of us, it takes all of you to commit to this. Now, as I said earlier, driving may be the most dangerous thing any of us do on a day-to-day -day basis. But we don't think about that, do we? But if we follow the five safe driving behaviors that I mentioned earlier, we can keep Utah safe. We can do this. We can get to zero fatalities. So think about this. When you get behind the wheel of a car today, take a deep breath. Relax. Don't be thinking about what you're late for. A deep breath and relax. Buckle your seatbelt. Take your phone and put it away. I have a friend that puts it in their trunk so that they're not tempted to reach out for their phone. Keep your eyes on the road. And I want to thank you all here for being here today and helping us get the message out. And I'll turn the time over to my friend, Major Jeff Nyberg with the Utah Highway Patrol. Thank you so much, Director Braceres. I just, first of all, this, this hasn't been our first press conference as it relates to fatalities and uh, vulnerable users. And sometimes I feel like we get blue in the face talking about this and trying to make it an important issue for everyone. And I just want a, a big shout out to Mayor Mendenhall for bringing a, a, a new focus on this, and especially with the partnership with uh, Zero Fatalities. And that's, that's gonna be great. And we wanna continue to move, move that program forward and get everybody involved. Um, we appreciate the par partnerships that we have with the state, county, and local organizations. If we are to make an impact, we must do this as a team, and that very, very much includes the public. We have already, already been reacquainted with the tragic stories of individuals making poor decisions behind the wheel and the result of significant loss of life. We at the Department of Public Safety and Utah Highway Patrol want to share our sincere apologies and condolences with the families that have had to suffer so much in Eagle Mountain and Salt Lake City and in other similar crashes across the state of Utah. We at the Utah Highway Patrol and Department of Public Safety are committed to do everything that we can to avoid such a tragic loss of life as we work together with our partners and the public. This is totally and unequivocally unacceptable, what's happened, and completely preventable. Um, this, we have to start taking responsibility for our actions and reduce these extreme driving behaviors. Again, it's unequivocally unacceptable uh, to be doing this and what's happened. As I thought about what I could share uh, that would be impactful, as it not only pertains to our vulnerable users, pedestrians, bicycles, motorcycles, and the general motoring, motoring public, I couldn't help but think of one consistent factor involved in all of these tragedies. And, and what made them preventable. And that's extreme driving behaviors, but more specifically, impairment, impaired driving. In 2021, there were 10,619 DUI arrests in Utah. That's an average of 29 arrests per day. 66 of 66% 66 of DUI tests contained drugs, 34% contained alcohol only. The average BAC for a DUI arrest was a 0.165 which is more than three times the legal limit in Utah. The top three substances reported uh, in those tests were THC, methamphetamine, and amphetamine. The use of alcohol with any drug was most prevalent with THC, so marijuana. 100 mile per hour citations have remained unusually high since the start of COVID, almost 5,000 last year. Uh, distract, distracted driving blitzes are ongoing uh, in just one of our four-hour uh, 
distracted driving blitzes. We stopped over 200 drivers suspected of driving uh, uh, while distracted in Utah County. So that's a prevalent, prevalent issue. Just a couple more stats that you might find interesting. Um, total impairment driving related fatalities uh, this year so far, uh, we're at 22 confirmed, 40 suspected. Uh, impaired driving related pedestrian fatalities, we have five so far this year, six suspected. Total distracted driving fatalities, we have three so far this year. And then what kind of blows my mind is our 100 mile per hour citations uh, on the freeways. Uh, we have, uh, in 2019, we had 3,773. 2020, we had 5,137. And then in 2021, we had 4,697. And year to date, we have almost 2,000 of those driving over 100 miles per hour. And they're significant. We're talking 125, 135. We've actually seen 145 miles per hour on the freeway. We absolutely have to stop these extreme driving behaviors. What we're doing at the Department of Public Safety and Highway Patrol is we're bolstering our DUI squad. Um, there was a period um, uh, just due to manpower issues that we had to re readjust and reassign some of those officers. We we're re-bolstering that and, and putting a focus on uh, uh, DUI enforcement. And we'd encourage our law enforcement partners, whether it be state, uh, county, or local, to do the same. We challenge them to focus on DUI enforcement. We recently started a wrong way driver task force uh, with that significant issue that's going on right now. Uh, we have UDOT as a partner, we have uh, engineers as partners on this task force and we've had our first meeting talking about potential solutions, potential technology, what we can do to better alert the public of a wrong way driver because most of these end in brutal crashes where people die. Uh, family members die as the mayor mentioned, uh, husbands, daughters, wives, you name it. And, and they're, they're, they're extremely sad and extremely brutal and they're completely preventable. So that's another thing that we're focusing on um, is the Department of Public Safety. We're doing everything we can to raise awareness about this problem. Uh, enforcement, education programs, local grant programs, and paid media campaigns are all part of DPS's and our partners' efforts to keep you safe on the roads. Uh, thank you to our law enforcement partners for their participation in this team effort. Uh, it's, it is critical for more Utahns to take their responsibility seriously in order for everyone to arrive home safely. And again, I just want to reiterate before I end that this is unequivocally unacceptable and we need to do something about this. Thank you. Now I'll turn the time over to uh, Captain with Salt Lake City PD. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Scott Smalley. I'm a uh, captain with the Salt Lake City Police Department. I oversee our Special Operations Division, which includes our uh, Motor Enforcement Squad. Uh, Chief Mike Brown is out of town at a National Law Enforcement Conference, and he uh, re sends uh, his regards. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to be here today. Um, like Mayor Mendenhall and other speakers have said today, uh, we too are very concerned with the increase in fatal traffic-related crashes in the city this year. Uh, the fatal crash on May 3rd marks the 11th traffic-related death in our city this year. And sadly, as we confirmed yesterday after the autopsy, 24-year-old uh, Libby Allen was pregnant at the time of her death. And our condolences go out to Libby's family and friends. Each traffic-related fatality represents the loss of someone's loved one. And with that in mind, the Salt Lake City Police Department is committed to reducing traffic-related injuries and death, which is why our patrol officers and motor squads are out every day diligently enforcing traffic laws. Recently, we conducted a speed enforcement mission, and we have more planned in the future. Uh, during the most recent speed enforcement operation, officers stopped someone driving more than 70 miles an hour on city roads, which is obviously unacceptable and creates an unnecessary hazard for other road users. To give you some context, there are more than 700 miles of center line roadway in our city and more than 8,500 intersections. We as police officers cannot be everywhere, but we as a community and as residents of Salt Lake can work together to address this issue. If you see a reckless or distracted driver, please call 911 immediately. 
We need people to be good witnesses so officers can be dispatched right away, know your exact location, your direction of travel, get a plate if possible, and have a good description of the vehicle ready to give to our dispatchers. Speed, impaired driving, and distracted driving are the most common factors in the crashes that we see that result in physical injury or death. As I mentioned earlier, so far in 2022, we've seen 11 traffic-related uh, fatalities in our city. During that same time frame last year, we had seen six. In 2020, it was three. And in 2019, by May 4th, we'd only seen one traffic-related death in our city. Those numbers are deeply concerning to us as a police department. The Salt Lake City Police Department is committed to working with the mayor, other city departments, the state, and other stakeholders to figure out how we can make our roads safer. As a community, we share our roads and sidewalks. We all have an equal responsibility when using our roads. Every road user has a responsibility to keep themselves and the community safe. Finally, I want to thank the members of our crash analysis reconstruction team. They go out on every traffic call that involves a death or serious injury. These call outs are very in-depth and time consuming investigations, wherein traffic accident investigators act with professionalism and decorum in responding to the needs of emotional and grieving family members while ensuring that a thorough investigation is conducted. This year, they've responded to 11 call outs and 11 traffic related deaths in Salt Lake City alone. Most of the deadly crashes we have seen this year have occurred at night and have involved pedestrians being hit by vehicles. Of the 11 people who have died this year in Salt Lake City, nine of those have been pedestrians. Our crash team members have extensive training and work closely with the district attorney's office. And as you've seen, these are complex investigations and our squad does a tremendous job. The Salt Lake City Police Department is committed to ensuring the safety of our roads for all users. Every one of us can make our roads safer and it starts by taking these actions. Thank you. Thank you. We're happy, I think, to take uh, interviews one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, we thank you for coming out. And just for clarification, the difference between the numbers that I cited and that Sergeant Smalley just cited, I was talking about pedestrian and cyclist-related deaths. He was talking about all traffic-related deaths and the difference there. This year is 11 in total. Nine of those were pedestrian-related. Um, thanks again for coming out. We're happy to talk with you offline.